the Fierce Kittens channel where today we are going to work on a blue cala clematis. Clematis? Clematis? I actually don't know how that's said, but it's a wristlet and it's a free pattern that's available on the Blue Cala Patterns website. And as a special treat, we're going to be doing this with a Goudé Tama, I actually know how to say that, <laughs> fabric that's been provided by Elephant House Fabrics. So, and you can look them up on the Book of Faces, otherwise known as Facebook. <laughs> so, we're going to be doing this tutorial step by step along the way. I will warn you that I do use an industrial machine. You don't have to have an industrial machine in order to accomplish this pattern, um, but I do kind of crutch on it because all of my cameras are set up to look at it. <laughs> so, that's what we're going to go with today. Um, so, if I do things a little differently and you're like, why is she burning thread? Well, that's why. I'll try to make sure that I point that out as I move through the steps. I also do things a little differently. The pattern does call for a slip pocket on the inside. I have never, nor will I ever, use the slip pocket. If you want to do that, that's up to you. Uh, her instructions are very clear on how to do it, and that's great. So let's dive in to the cut pieces and how I've prepared them. All right, pictured here, you see all of the pieces that we need to make the clematis. I'm gonna botch the name of it. It's a wristlet, anyway. <laughs> so we have the, uh, the exterior here, um, which I have opted to use a, a canary yellow marine vinyl for the base. Um, you can uh, like skip the vinyl base of it and use just the one pattern piece for the lining if you want, um, but for the sake of the tutorial, I decided to cover all the bases, well, slip pocket accepting. So here we have the vinyl base, and so this, and the top of the exterior, so this comprises of the exterior. Now for my lining, I am using waterproof canvas, so I didn't need to interface it. Um, so as a note, uh, the pattern calls for a fleece interfacing. I did use uh, woven fuse first on the uh, on the back of the pattern piece here, just to make sure I had uh, made it a little stronger because I have found that thermolam shrinks quite a bit under heat. Um, so I set it down to a wool setting, but it still kind of wrinkles up a bit. So while it's hot, like if you have that problem, take Take one of your acrylic rulers like this and just scrape across the top of it while it's still warm or even just reheat it and just keep gently scraping and it'll kind of get rid of those wrinkles. So like I've had that happen so many times with Thermalam, it drives me nuts. Um, so I have a zipper. This is from Zipper Tape. Um, I've already prepared it. There will be other tutorials on Zipper Tape in the future. Um, I will put down uh, in the description below a link to a friend of mine, uh, Lady Crafts, who has made wonderful tutorials on Zipper Tape. Um, but you don't even need to use Zipper Tape. You can just grab whatever. This is a number five zipper. Um, and then I'm going to cap both ends of it. If you're using a commercial zipper, so let, let me actually grab one real quick. And this is me being picky, the yellow didn't match the canary. <laughs> so I didn't want three variations of yellow on here. But uh, if you're using a commercial zip that's already been prepared for you, then uh, you only really need to cap the one end. So I buy my zipper tape super long um, and then just cut off what I don't need and cap that side. With this side, you can actually just fold over Whatever, that's, that's kind of getting into different territory, but you don't have to cap both ends, I just choose to um, for the look. And so I have these two cap pieces here. Um, and then this is the attachment for the D-ring um, that is also going to hold the strap. Not pictured here is the strap pieces because I wanna show you how to do that later as kind of an extension of a tutorial for uh, making fabric straps. So we're gonna start with assembling the exterior pieces so we have whole pieces to work with. Um, and so the first thing that I like to tell people to do is to grab the pattern piece. Now I, I am using an acrylic pattern uh, by Tops and Bobbins, um, if that interests you. I will put the link in the description below. Um, and I'm going to mark the top center. Um, and by doing that, it'll help me line up everything uh, correctly when I am attaching it to the main exterior piece. Now I just use an ink pen. You can use chalk or uh, a marker, whatever you prefer. Uh, I just like to, I have this little gel pen. 
So, and I, so we've done the bottom pieces, and now I'm going to do the same thing to the exterior, noting which is the bottom. And I'm loving how I fussy cut these guys. These are very cute, very cute fabric indeed. So we've got, <laughs> we've got, don't care. <laughs> this, the, <laughs> and five more minutes, which basically personifies the past two and a half weeks in quarantine. So I'm, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying this fabric quite a bit. So and then we mark the center on these main pieces as well. And if you're using a pen, please remember to blot it away so you don't accidentally mark anything else. So we're going to take one of the pieces uh, for the main exterior and we're going to kind of, if you, if you were facing it and it's facing up, let's just go ahead and turn that around so it's upside down. I'm going to grab my clips and then I'm going to take one of the vinyl pieces and flip it so that, so see they're supposed to go to the gutter like this, so go ahead and put it like that as a right side up and then flip it over so that it's not only now it appears right side up to you, but it's wrong side down. And what you want to do is take these points that you had made previously and line them up like that. Put a clip, pin, whatever you want to use. Do the center, and then come over to the side for each of the sides and go ahead and plop them down with a clip or pen on either end. Now what you're going to do is you're going to be like, oh my god, look at all this extra stuff. It's so extra. Well, you're just going to ease it in. So I tend to start at the center, just kind of squish a bit, just squish, squishy squish. And uh, you can never, you can never have enough clips. So just clip to your heart's desire. <laughs> but I always start in the center because it kind of helps me squish the excess into different areas. This should fairly line up quite well. This is like a really, really, really good pattern. Uh, and a lot of people sew with these, uh, this pattern and sell them very successfully um, at craft fairs. So I, I actually, it is, it is my my best seller because I don't have to sell it for $500 in order to recoup. <laughs> it also only has like a couple of pattern pieces, so it's great. All right, so there's one of them. Let's do the same, but to the other. And I will speed up the video just a bit so you're not watching me do this for an hour. Okay, now that we have both of them done, we're going to take them over to the sewing machine and sew them along the edge there where the clips are. Now with that, we are at the machine. Go ahead and you can sew. The seam allowance for this pattern is 3 eighths of an inch. If you're a very observant person, you will notice I'm doing one quarter of an inch. That's my preference. You do not have to follow what I'm doing. Um, so regardless, the, the instructions for this pattern do not change. I just, that's just my preference. Now, since I'm using vinyl, I am also using a longer stitch length of three millimeters to ensure that I don't perforate that vinyl. Oh, you know what helps is to turn on the machine. That, that helps, that's a good one. Just gently move your way. I, it helps to do this the vinyl side up. So you can kind of see if you're getting any little puckers or curves. And again, like for me, the quarter inch works better. Um, not because I'm lazy, I'm kind of lazy, but <laughs> it, does, it does actually work out better for me because I, I get less puckering from it. I feel like the, the wider the uh, seam allowance, the, the more likely I am to run into puckering. All right. Now I use a thread burner, like I said at the beginning of the window, uh, or the window, I'm in front of a window. Uh, at the beginning of the video, don't, don't be concerned with thread burning and all that crap if you're on a domestic machine. All right, so that finishes that seam. So now we're going to do 
the other one, and I will speed up the video for that part. Now you have both of the pieces sewn together, but you see how they're kind of like, I don't know, it's, it won't stay down. It's kind of pulling itself up. It naturally wants to lay against the gudetama. Um, so you're going to want to top stitch this. And I don't normally go back to the cutting table for this portion of it, but you're going to make sure that the seam allowance on the interior is facing down. So flip over your piece and just finger press that down very gently like that. And it'll kind of help form it. And then you're going to top stitch on the vinyl side because you want to end up stitching down the seam allowance. So you're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the seam at a longer stitch length. I just crank that up. I'm just going to go ahead and place this here and top stitch right along that edge, just very slowly and carefully. If you're wondering what the heck is this special foot that I have, this is a compound walking foot. You can purchase a walking foot for a domestic machine depending on your brand. They do help, uh, especially once you get to like bulkier seams, but it's not a requirement. Okay, I'll burn those off, yeah. Burn it, <laughs> okay? And then you have a really nice top stitch. Look how pretty that is. See, and it doubles as two things. So now this is laying flat. It's not looking all funky, but it also ensures that, that like it's just, yeah, it just looks nice and it's not gonna roll forward. See, the, uh, seam, the, the top stitching has a lot of uses. So let's do the other one as well, all right? I won't speed this up. Sometimes it's nice to see this part twice, but you can speed it up if you want. Yay, internet. Okay, so finger press down just to help. Definitely don't iron it if you're using vinyl. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't feel like you've got to go super fast with the top stitch. This is the part of the bag that's going to be visible in most situations, so you want it to look good. And also, the other scary thing is since we're using vinyl, you can't, you can't fix it if you make a mistake. You're hosed. That's always a nice feeling, isn't it? All right, so we're done with the making the exterior. Let's go add a label. All right, back at the cutting table, we have applied a label. I went ahead and I did that. Um, and then uh, we have everything set up for our exterior. So now we need to start preparing our zipper. So we're gonna take the exterior pieces and go ahead and move them off to the side. And this is where you're going to get your zipper and you need to create caps for either end of your zipper. Again, like I mentioned in the very beginning when we were going over materials, you don't have to cap either end. I am just choosing to because I have zipper tape that I have used. So, Taking the little pieces, which these are just, um, well, like two inch by two inch scraps-ish. Um, and it, again, like the width you're gonna use is going to depend on the, t the size of zipper. I have a number five zipper, so it's about an inch and a quarter wide. Hi, <laughs> depending on the orientation. And so, um, so I, I make these basically two inch by two inch and then I, I fold them in half and I do a lot of steaming. So let's, let's show you. So I'm gonna grab all of this stuff and bring it up here to the table so you can watch what I'm doing. And this is an Ollie sew. As you see up here with the dots, it's a hand sensor so it can detect when it's being held. When it's not being held, it will pop up. Please don't be afraid. It's not sentient and it's not coming here to destroy the planet. So, <sighs> whew. All right, <laughs> so take one of your two inch by two inch squares. I kind of overshot this one. Um, and you're gonna fold it in half, like so. And you're going to iron that right at that half mark. Then you're going to open it back up 
and you have this nice crease right there. You're going to fold each side inward, and you can do this one at a time. I'm just really good at this now. And you're going to iron those raw edges to that center mark. Steam if you need to. Okay, so see how it's folding now? It looks a lot like bias tape. Okay, let it cool off. I really don't want to burn my fingernails off. <laughs> Toenails falling off after running is bad enough. And take the folded ends and fold them to each other. And then, once again, because that's that center seam that you had steamed first, you're going to take that and iron it flat. So that is how you make a zipper cap. So I'm going to quickly do it to the other one as well. And this one, again, I, I, I apologize. I had made it a little a wider strip than intended. So I'm just going to quickly go over this so I don't confuse anybody. Oh, my gosh. But, you know, what ofs? What ofs? It's fine. This is fine. <laughs> We're just in a pandemic. Okay. And folding, ouch, 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 my fingers, don't do that, don't be me. Don't be me. Be safe. Don't be a kitten. Okay, ta-da! All right, so now I'm gonna take this stuff and move it off to the side, because we're gonna need that bad boy later. All right, take your zipper and your clips, which I left over at the machine, and you're gonna take the zipper cap and put it over the raw end of your zip. If you have cut your zipper tape, by the way, take a candle or a lighter and very gently burn the end, just like that, very quickly. Don't burn the acrylic because it'll cause the teeth to kind of curl up and get all mangled, but you want to do that to finish it off. Otherwise, it'll actually start fraying and fall apart on you, and you don't want that to happen, okay? So you're going to cover the end and I just put a little clip right there. Same thing on the other side. If you're doing both. Again, you don't have to do both. I'm just special. There you go. All right. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to top stitch either side right along the edge. And that's going to keep your zipper from falling apart on you. So let's go do that. At the machine. You're going to very gently put the zipper right underneath. If you're using an acrylic zipper, your needle's going to be just fine. You're not going to run into any issues. And I'm going to start the stitch and back stitch. Remove my clip as I need to. And I find that it helps to kind of pull on this a little bit to ensure that I have it nice and lined up because you need it lined up on both ends. And I'm only stitching maybe an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I don't want to go too far off. There we go. All right, and now for the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to leave the clip on there while I get this started. Take the clip off. Make sure everything's nice and lined up and pull. Fantastic. Gonna get rid of uh, my threads here. And now we'll go back to the cutting table. Back at the cutting table, you're gonna take a nice good pair of scissors. These are my femores, love them. And I'm just gonna trim excess so away. You might not have excess if you had measured this just so. I, I, tend, to, I tend to over measure um, and just trim as needed. And trim away the sides so that everything is even. So you're, you're, these caps should be lined up perfectly with the zipper tape. I'm gonna try, since this is a zipper tape, I need to kind of figure out, okay, where is the actual opening? So there we go. So this is gonna be the side of the bag that is going to, like, this will be, if it was front facing, you want it to open this way. So that's why I kind of moved the zip that way. Now we're gonna take what we want to be the front piece, which is gonna be this little guy. Remember, he personifies me. And we're gonna take the zipper and we're gonna put it 
about five eighths, half an inch to five eighths of an inch away from the edge. And you want to do that because, again, this, is, this isn't just to make your zipper safe so it doesn't fall apart on you. This is also so that your zipper doesn't end up causing additional bulk on the edges. So in a, in a zippered bag like this, um, you don't want to have the zipper tape in the side seams because it'll make it darn near impossible for it to maintain the proper silhouette. And so you'll get like these divots at the top and they won't fold out correctly or they'll fold out, but it'll be temporary. That's what you're trying to avoid here. So you can actually just place this right here to center it where you want. And I just use clips. And go ahead and clip around like that. And you can adjust as needed as you're moving through. Again, I'm using a, a quarter inch seam allowance with this bag. So I'm not gonna be running into the same problems that some other people would see. So you may wanna actually shave off more length from your zipper if you're doing that. But I, I really like the look of it with the quarter inch. And it's a small enough bag that I don't feel like I uh, am having issues trying to get trying to get things to like line up, you know, there's, it's not a lot of bulk with the interfacing. That's usually my, my concern. Now, I personally like to live dangerously and I do like to go ahead and sandwich the zipper. I use so many clips that I find it darn near impossible <laughs> for me to screw up. Um, of course, watch me say that and then I do. So what I do is I then take one of my lining pieces and I overlay it on top just like that. And I go ahead and I sew it all together at once. And again, you don't have to do this. If you don't wanna do what I'm doing, go base this on with a long stitch length, you know, something like five or six millimeters about an eighth of an inch away. And then you can do this part. So if you don't feel comfortable doing what I'm doing, then you can do that. But, like I said, I like to live dangerously. Yes. Okay, well, that, that wasn't Austin Powers, but, you know, it was, it was funny to me. So I'm laughing on the inside. Lord knows I need the jokes right now. All right, so now I'm going to take this over to the machine, and the front of the bag will technically be done at that point. Back at the machine, we're going to go ahead. We're going to move back to a regular stitch length. And I am going to sew this on a quarter inch away from the edge. Just like that. But here's a little trick that I will teach you about zipper applications. We're going to go ahead and put the needle about halfway down, just like that. Reach up underneath your piece and grab the zipper head lift the presser foot and move the zipper head to the back of the work. Sometimes this causes the zipper tape to jostle around so you can just look to make sure. Uh, seems like we're doing a-okay there. But what that does is it gets the zipper head out of the way of the presser foot and the needle so you don't get this really weird bump like that when you're sewing your zipper. Makes it look a lot prettier. Because if you get that bump, it's gonna look real funky when you flip this right side out. And go all the way to the end. Don't stop it just where that, the, the, the zipper cover was. You need to go all the way to the bottom of, the, of it down here. Awesome, okay, back to the cutting table. Okay, now we're back at the cutting table. You're gonna flip this work right side out so you can see the beautiful zipper again. See, that's nice. Oh, look at that, it's beautiful, yes. Okay, so the reason you do this is because you need to see the zipper so that you can put it on the other side. So you're gonna take your other piece and you're gonna have it right side up and you're gonna take this guy here, the assembled piece you have so far and flap it. You can just put it right sides together 
on the other piece. And now you can use the other piece to kind of line up where you want things to go. I left my clips at the machine again. You see, I leave those things in because it's just genuine. I do this while I stream too. I just leave my stuff all over the room. All right, so we're gonna put that on. And see, I've lined up everything, so everything's lined up nicely. So you don't get anything like kind of catty cornered. And you'll notice that like I put I put the clips on either end and then I clip the center. And again, that just helps me so I don't end up with, like, because the zipper tape can stretch a little. So we don't want it to stretch more on one end or the other because then you get like this wobbly looking zipper and that's never good. And I am going to err on the side of using too many clips. Sometimes once you get the, the, second, the second side, like the flipped side like we're doing now, uh, it becomes a little harder to manipulate under the machine, just depending on your machine. All right, so now take your other lining piece and put it face down so your right side's together on the other lining piece. Uh, once again, as a reminder, if you don't want to do it this way, that's totally fine. Baste it and then come back. And I just, I just use so many clips that <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do. It's not going anywhere. It's also one of those things where it's like over time you just get better at it and you can start skipping steps and then it's a sweatshop. All right, so let's take this back to the machine. Same deal with this side. Stitch all the way from this end to the opposite end quarter inch away. Regular seam uh, uh, stitch length, sorry. I use my fingers to kind of press things down. I'm using waterproof canvas again for my linings. And the reason I like to do that is because you don't have to interface it. It costs less than interfacing a nice quilting fabric in the end. Plus, the waterproof capabilities of it are fantastic. I can't tell you how many times I've had people come back to me and say, oh no, I spilled a Coca-Cola in my purse. And I'm like, whoopsie diddle, not my fault. All right, needle halfway down, press your foot up when you get to that zipper head. Reach all the way underneath your work, grab that zipper head and say, bye Felicia. So it's out of the way, you get it? Anyway, so we're gonna eat. The, the zipper head out of existence. Not really, but just out of the way. And go all the way down to the end. Ba -dum. All right. Fantastico. All right. Now back to the cutting table. Back at ye old cutting table, you're going to take that piece and flip it. And you're like, oh, it's the inside. Oh, that's fine, just flip it the other way. There we go. And you wanna expose all of this. And we're gonna open the zip all the way. Like for my case, it was already open all the way. So really not a big deal. So here's, here's top stitching 101 when it comes to zipper bags. You can either top stitch just the exterior or you can do it to the exterior and the lining. I always do it to the through both the exterior and the lining. And the reason for that is really simple because if you have a, a lining that's like super stiff like this and wants to face a certain way, um, you're gonna run into some big issues trying to get it to lay flat. It'll do this puffy crap on the inside and try to roll out and get caught in your zipper. So you don't want that to happen. But then you're like, but kittens, how do I do this and then be able to effectively piece this thing together at the very end? So the answer to that is pretty darn simple. You don't stitch with the top stitch within your stitch length or uh, seam allowance. What you're gonna wanna do is start, and I usually start like a half inch away from either end. Just, you know, do your back stitch, top stitch, top stitch, top stitch, and then stop when you're about a half inch away from the other side. So, the top stitch doesn't kind of like, 
It doesn't restrict the movement of the ends here, so you can effectively sew over it correctly, and it doesn't create unnecessary extra bulk on the inside of the bag. So um, you may find that it's easier to go ahead and zip the zipper up. This bag, because it has the curved top, is a little funky. I find it easier to kind of form the shape on the side I'm going to top stitch. And the reason I came back to the cutting table to show you this is because it's really hard on that zoomed in cam for the sewing machine. But you're going to want to kind of feed it this way, kind of like in a rocking motion. Um, if you try to go flat, then what you're going to end up doing is stitching the front really well, but then the inside ends up all pinched up and funky looking. So just take it a little bit at a time and pull on either the lining and the, the exterior like this. Sew a little bit, pinch, pull on them, and just to make sure they're both pulled away from the zipper tape. And, and just as you roll along, you'll find that you're kind of curling the fabric and the piece as you're working through to make this kind of like seesaw motion. So we're going to do that to both sides in order to top stitch it. And again, I am going through both. So I'll show you and I'll try to talk through it so you can kind of follow my motion. But again, the reason I came back over here was to make sure that you understood what I was doing because with that close up view, it's kind of hard to see. So one of the other things I'll do is, is pull the zoom back. So you might be able to see that uh, the manipulation that I do at the machine. Okay, I've pulled out the zoom, so hopefully you can watch me uh, do this. One thing I want to do real quick is make sure I actually have enough bobbin. I do! Oh, it's like a Christmas miracle. Always check your bobbin before you go to top stitch because you don't want to end up like, like me where I've top stitched pieces and have run out of bobbin thread because uh, it just doesn't look good um, if you have to start it over again. I'm going to reach in there. This mine's a little different because it's a fantastical little thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and manipulate my machine to set it to a 4.5 millimeter stitch length for the top stitch. Line up the bottom and I'm going to go back a ways from, from the edge there, about a half an inch away, and I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. I'm going to go ahead and start that. And again, pulling on the lining and the exterior and just hold it in place. Make sure your needle is down before you grab anything and start pulling on it, by the way. Also, if anybody has easier suggestions for how to do this, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments. I do not mind people coming in here and going, hey, idiot, this is how you do it. But this is how I've done it for like three years now. Okay, pulling. And you see how I'm curling it up just to kind of follow the shape of the bag and the zipper? A lot of people, what they have actually done in the past is taken the bag pattern and flattened the top without having the curve. Makes it a little easier to run through. All right, so we're coming up on the end. So I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. I'm going to go about, about to where the uh, little zipper cover is. Just like that. OK. I'm going to take my thread zapper, and I'm using bonded polyester thread. That's, this is why I have to use a thread zapper. So I have to actually, like, burn the ends of it, otherwise um, it can fray. So we don't want that to happen. Okay. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Just going to flip that bad boy over, straighten it up. Get it under the needle, about about where the uh, you know the little the zipper cover starts. Start that off, and then go ahead and start manipulating it. I'm having some issues manipulating. Go cool figure. Sometimes I like to raise the foot. Okay. Yeah. 
needle. Go ahead and put that needle in there. It's like, <laughs> doesn't want to listen. There we go. Jeez. Just being difficult, just to be difficult, aren't you, machine? It's trying to embarrass me while I'm, I'm recording for the internet. Okay, and all the way down. Well, not all the way down, but down enough. Go to the end of your zipper. One more. I don't want to overshoot the goal. And back stitch. Great. I'm going to bring this around. Just burn that. Burn it to the ground. Well, not really. I mean, you know. But anywho. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the cutting table and I will talk about next steps because even though I personally can do the next steps here at this machine, I don't think you guys could. So let's go back over to the cutting table and talk about that. Ta-da! It's cute, but it's not done yet. So we still have stuff to do, but I want to talk about it over here. Um, so you see that we have these triangles that you've had to cut out, these little, these little divots on the exterior and on the lining pieces. So what these do is these add depth to the bag. So you know how you have boxed corners where you also have pinched corners. So it's like a dart, just like a dart if you've made shirts or dresses for women. You're going to put your wrong sides to, or right sides together, sorry, right sides together like that, and I, I clip it just to kind of hold it in place. You can do that on each of these. Go ahead and just clip them. Same for the lining, right sides together, pinch. You could theoretically do this before, but you see how it kind of makes this a little bulky and a little weird to kind of manipulate now that it's not flat. Um, so I always wait to do this practically last before assembly, and, and that is purely because it's easier to top stitch when this guy is laying flat. So we'll go back all the way around and clip these in place. And then I'll go show you how we're gonna sew them down to look really awesome and create that depth that you want. Okay, I usually start with the exterior, really doesn't matter. You're gonna take that darted piece and only this portion and you're gonna go from the outside of it to the inside where the point is and you're going to stitch your seam allowance following the edge here until you get up to the top, but don't stitch through the top. Just like with the dart, you don't want to go all the way through because it'll create a really harsh point. So you're going to go up to, but not through the edge. So about here, and then back stitch. And we're going to do that for all of these. Here at the cutting table, we're gonna flip everything out and have a look. Everything looks really cute and nice. Same thing, same thing with the inside. Go ahead and flip that. Just a, if anything, to make sure everything looks good. And it does, it looks great. So before we can finish assembling all of this, what we really need to do is to make the D-ring connector. And that is gonna go on the side that is opening. And that is so that when you grip the side, when you have the wrist strap, you can pull on it to kind of help guide the zipper off. So that's gonna go on this side. 
So I'm actually going ahead and using vinyl. You don't have to use vinyl, um, but that's, that's honestly what I prefer for these. Um, it's really strong, it's a marine vinyl. If you're using something like a fleece-backed vinyl, you're going to want to interface it with a little bit of woven interfacing, like Woven Fuse or Shape Flex 101, um, because if you don't, it's going to rip. Trust me, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna completely rip apart. So um, take heed when you do that. You may even, if it's not a marine vinyl especially, you're going to probably want to take um, a little bit of of like a decavil or extra woven fuse and put it in the center wherever you feel that D-ring is gonna go. Now for us, it's gonna be completely centered. Now, I like to use leather tape. I don't use the wash away tapes, that's for garments. So I use leather tape instead when I'm making my straps like this. Boop because it, it's made my life so much easier <laughs> since getting this stuff. Um, the wash away tape used to just peel off right away um, and it has a tendency to dry out. So if you don't keep it in a nice um, dark area, it's, it just falls apart. So I'm just gonna put, I put that line in down the center and I folded the raw edges toward the center. Now, I'm going to take this and top stitch it um, because that is, uh, it, it'll, otherwise it will look really wo uh, wonky and these, the tape will not hold it permanently, so you don't want to have that happen. So let's take this over the machine and give it a little bit of top stitch on either side. Make sure the machine is at a top stitch length for your stitch length. And I go about, I go about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Like that. Same thing on the other side. I know the angle looks dangerous, but I promise you I'm safe. Anyway, there we have our D-ring attachment that is nicely top stitched and it matches, so that's important. Now we're gonna take our D-ring and we're gonna insert it so that the flat side is on, is on the side that's the wrong side and we're gonna kinda just sandwich that in there just like that. And you'll probably be wondering why I didn't stitch this. Um, if you want to right now, um, you can stitch as closely to the edge of the D-ring as you can right here and that'll stop it from flipping around. I actually go in at the end and use rivets. I think it looks nicer. Um, so that's why I'm not doing that in particular. Um, but I just take one clip and put it right there just to hold everything for me. All right. Now I want you to grab the assembled piece and you're gonna open the zipper, trust me, you're gonna wanna open the zipper all the way or as much as you can where the zipper head isn't gonna get caught in the seam while we're working with it. Here's where I do say to grab like a quarter inch double-sided tape. Um, and I'm gonna use leather tape, you don't have to. Um, you can use the Dritz wash away stuff if you want for this. So you're gonna flip out your work so that you have the exterior right sides together and the lining right sides together. This is gonna be the side, remember, that gets the D-ring. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in like so. And I actually have mine kinda hang out over the edge an additional quarter of an inch just to give it a little bit of extra strength right, right there. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and put a little bit of tape in. If I can find the end of it, there it is. So I'm just gonna grab a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of this tape, like that. And I'm gonna put it down like r right over the seam here. So it's gonna straddle the seam between the lining and the exterior. There's a method to my madness here, <laughs> promise. You're gonna take this 
D-ring attachment and set it down about a quarter inch over the edge and that's just to give it a little more room and you're using a bit of that tape too to kind of hold it down. Now take the exterior, this is why we didn't top stitch that last half an inch, and you're going to press it down, line up, line up your seams and press it onto that tape. Sorry, it's really hard to show this, but you're gonna line up your seams and press. What the tape is going to do is ensure that it doesn't move out of the way or that your foot, your presser foot, doesn't apply too much pressure to one end or another or their feed dogs don't pull, so you end up with them malaligned in the end. So the tape will kind of hold them where they're supposed to be. In the meantime, I just put that there, get that tape in there nice and stiff, and apply a clip or a pen if you're using pens. If you want, you can do the same down here. My, I'm using this marine vinyl and it's already a little bit sticky on its own, so I'm not gonna really fuss over it too much. But the tape trick works there just as well. Now for these guys, I like to open up the corners so that I don't have too much bulk. So you don't want to do, you don't want to do the seams facing one way or the other, but you, what you could do is you could flip them like this if you'd rather. As long as they're not the same, just line them up and just don't have them face the same direction. That will help reduce the bulk so that you don't have any issues when you go to sew on the machine, especially a domestic machine. My machine, nicknamed Honey Badger, doesn't care and will stitch over almost anything. But, and uh, if you want it's easier, go ahead to the other side and make sure they're kind of pushing in the same direction and line those up. Tape works there quite well too, if you need it. And then you just line up the raw edges and clip into place. Wonder bar. All right, same thing here on this side. And I, I, I find it helps to just start way at the back and roll forward to maintain alignment. Because remember, you're gonna be stitching like a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch away from the edge. Same dealio over here. You want a little bit of tape. Let's get that tape ready. And you note that I don't cut a whole lot of tape and that's because, see how it kind of pushes in? It makes like a little bit of a V shape. That's really hard to manipulate <laughs> with the tape. So I don't, like I had to pinch it kind of in the center there. So if you want, if you feel like you need it, what you can do is you can cut separate pieces of tape and then push up your zipper, your little, the zipper end and the zipper should be facing up and line those up and push into place. I look like I'm about to kill it, but really I'm just trying to push it and hold it in place because I get super paranoid that it's going to fall apart while I'm holding it. I'm like, please don't fall apart. <laughs> There's some things where it's like, once you've been through some bag making trauma, that just kind of hits home. Okay, on the inside, and I don't really worry about the lining pieces, the, their corners facing different directions, but if you have a very thick lining, go for it. Um, split them up. But the key thing about the interior is we're going to leave a hole. And the reason for that is quite simple. We need a way to flip this bad boy right side out. So let's do that. I'm gonna leave a hole. I like to leave a generous hole. Because especially if you're using, if you use like vinyl or something, you're gonna want a lot of extra room to wiggle around so you don't accidentally pull on the vinyl and like rip it or anything. So this is what it should look like when you're done applying every clip on the planet to your work. You're gonna leave this wide opening here. This is probably five to six inches wide. It could be more. I'm too lazy to count the squares. 
Um, so you'll leave that open in the lining at the bottom and then you just line everything up around the edges using tape as needed uh, for your comfort level. We're going to start sewing on this end and we're going to go up and around but once we get to this part where the lining is meeting the exterior we're going to kind of pivot inward get to where that seam is where where you see like the um the seam where the zipper was attached for both of these pieces and we're going to stop put the needle down halfway and pivot and then continue sewing in this direction. That will ensure that this maintains its V shape and you don't do this funky curve up and around and down the thing because then what'll happen is these sides won't look the same. So I'll demonstrate that. Let's go to the machine. With the regular seam allowance, starting off down here at the bottom in the lining at the opening, we're gonna back stitch and continue to sew around your seam allowance very carefully. This is a curved edge. This is a very curvy bag. So you don't want to go super crazy fast. Now, as you're approaching the seam up here at the top, the seam being where the zipper is, you may find it useful to grab one of those humper jumpers as, or a seam -a jig or whatever Amazon wants to call it this week and put it up under your foot. I have this walking foot so I don't need it. So this is not a necessity for me. But you may find it'll help you with the bulkiness of coming up from the low loft of the lining to the high loft of this section here with the D-ring and everything. Um, so I'm just gonna sew up and I, what I do is I sew up to that point where the lining and the exterior were sewn together, right there in that seam, and I put that needle halfway down. I lift my presser foot and I pivot so I am going back down in this direction. I do backstitch a little bit right there at the bottom portion of the D-ring and the reason I do that is because otherwise there will be a little bit of a gap. And up here you won't have the gap because you're so close to the zipper and they were the same level. But as this one comes down, sometimes it's like skiing downhill, right? Not that you ski uphill, but going really fast downhill. So if you back it up a little, then you might catch that seam. Right, going right over this. All along the bottom, you don't need to leave an opening. Of course, you would not leave an opening on the exterior for flipping. That would be totally wrong. Tote, totes wrong. You see, I get my fingers really in there. It looks so unsafe. I promise you everything's fine. <laughs> I'm not trying to harm myself. I swear it's the angle. Again, coming up on the other side, just like we did on the other side, you're gonna take your, your needle, put it halfway down, and then pivot. Now this is coming from the high loft to the low loft. So take it easy here. And if you're using the, the, the uh, humper jumper, you can put it on the front here so that you gently can glide down to where you are the same. I'm just gonna go really slowly here and hand crank because I don't want to have this go, ah, and like glide really quickly down this hill and make extremely uh, long stitches uh, that aren't like, holding things in as they should. Talk about first world problems with an industrial machine, right? Okay. And then I can continue. They're coming around on the last bit. And we're gonna back stitch here and leave that hole open. Do not stitch all the way across. If you do, you're gonna be really sad when you reach through and find out you can't flip this thing right side out. All right, let's take this over to the cutting table and I'll show you how to flip it. 
Woo! All right, almost done. Almost done. And by almost, I mean not really. So you're going to take a small pair of scissors. You know how there's these, all these curved edges? Aren't they awesome? You're going to snip, not up to the seam, just a little a itty bitty snip, especially if there's vinyl involved, just these itty bitty snips. And what this is going to do is help it lay flat. Heck, I can even trim some of that away. I don't think I cut that one spot accurately. But you don't want to snip all the way up because it can actually rip through, especially for the vinyl. But just a little bit snippy, snip, snip. And this will let it lay flat when you go to flip it right side out. I also do this to the lining because otherwise the lining won't lay flat. And one thing I forgot to mention is I tend to do a little bit of a wider um, stitch length here. Uh, or uh, seam allowance, sorry, a wider seam allowance on the lining because it lays flatter uh, on the inside and you don't get a saggy lining. Uh, I have a completely separate tutorial on that though, which is why I forgot to mention it. All right, after you've snipped your corners, your little rounded edges, you're going to gently reach inside like this with your thumbs and start pushing out using your thumbs. What I don't want you to do is reach in and rip out everything because that's, that's just not good. The pulling action is bad. Pushing with your thumbs and gently rolling things out and pushing is going to be a lot easier on you, easier on your zipper, easier on your ancestors. <laughs> I don't know anymore. I can't, I can't even make up humor. So once you've got it kind of flipped out, then you can, then you can push a bit. Then you can go to the inside and start pushing things out to make it look like it's supposed to look, because right now it's just like a giant blob with adorable Goudet Tamas. Now, just push, the, push that out and see how nicely lined up everything is. OMG, it's perfection. It's so awesome, yes. So proud of myself. I'd like to accept this award for best bag ever. Okay. <laughs> I am a character, it is known. All right, so still doesn't look all that awesome, but that's because its insides are hanging out. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to gently, I'm just like, I'm pushing this stuff out of the way just so I can better explain this. You're going to fold this under a quarter inch on either side and just put them together and clip. Clips help, again, I left them at the machine. All right, so I'm gonna take these guys and just fold under those raw edges, just like so, and clip in place. And this is how we're going to seal up this bottom opening. If you want to, you can, you can slip stitch this shut. Um, I don't, because my philosophy has always been if someone's looking at the very bottom of a bag, you did something wrong to the outside of the bag. So what I do is I stitch very closely to that edge, like right up along that edge. And it doesn't, it, it's kind of cheaty that I'm using uh, waterproof canvas because it folds so nicely. So, and you can see it looks really crinkly and it really is, it's, it's fairly stiff. And that's the only reason I didn't use Decaville light here, if I wasn't using, um, you know, the waterproof canvas, I probably would have had Decaville light on this instead of fleece. But I've done both and have spent almost an hour sweating and huffing and puffing to birth the bag. So I decided never again. So let's go back to the machine and we're going to stitch this shut. I don't change to a top stitch length on this. I want it to actually be a construction length. So I'm going to keep mine at three millimeters and as close to the edge as possible. You may want to use an edge foot. I just stitch and keep an eye on the alignment of my fabric to make sure that I'm not missing anything. You don't want to have a, a hole in the bottom of the bag that's left over, right? That would be bad. But definitely one reason a client would call you back and yell at you which nobody wants. 
So that closes it up nicely. And you can see it's really small. The profile of it is not that big. Um, and, and on the other side of it here too. So why spend all that time hand sewing it shut when you can just do this and get it done faster? Um, it just, it looks, it looks nice too, you know, just right along that edge there. Okay, so now we're gonna take this back and flip it to the inside and then start talking about what goes here. When you're back at the cutting table, go ahead and gently push your lining down. The waterproof canvas is a little bitey. It likes to fight me on this, so bear with me. This is like struggling. Struggle boss. So go ahead and have that in there. And you can close that up. And there's your wristlet, except not really because you don't have the wrist strap. Um, now remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some fancy stuff at the end here, but I'll show you how I use my rivet press. So bonus, right? Um, but yeah, this basically makes it, and you can see like, even with me taking a smaller seam allowance um, and doing quarter inch instead of three eighths of an inch, I just don't know why there would be a slip pocket in there, except maybe if you wanted to organize cards, but then they would slip out. Um, so I just opt not to do that. Um, I get asked often why I don't put the slip pocket in, and, and purely it's like, at, at some point with bag size, there has to be some give, um, and I just don't normally bother with it on these smaller bags. So to make the strap, what we're gonna do is we're going to combine uh, fabric with vinyl. Um, sometimes I just, you know, use uh, seat belt, seat belt um, strapping instead. I actually, I will get this out and show you. Um, I will actually use this nice nylon webbing that's uh, heavy duty seat belt style, but it doesn't really match what we're doing here. Um, so I don't wanna do that. What I wanna do is make one that matches, but this is a marine vinyl. It's not a very thin vinyl as you can imagine. And so I don't wanna like uh, quadruple it up and make this giant vinyl strap. So I want it to have some of this fabric and I want that to be the outside. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut um, just a, a two inch wide uh, by 15, 16 inch long piece of vinyl. And then I'm gonna cut the exact same thing out of fabric. So let's go ahead and grab that. So I'm gonna move that off to the side. And I've got vinyl here. This is scrap vinyl, and you can tell it already has some marks on it on the back side. Um, I find it easier to mark these things and then come back and cut um, because it, it, sometimes the rulers will just do the slidey thing and then you end up messing up. And so this is just easier. So I like to do 16 inch long. And remember, it's gonna be folded in half, and then you've gotta chuck a hook at the end of it. And I do these with the hooks primarily so that people can remove them if they want and use them as like an electronics bag instead. Um, so, go ahead, where's my rotary blade? There it is. Okay, and we're gonna cut that out. It's just easier safer too, I guess. I've had that thing slip on me so many times and I've almost cut myself that I'm just like, yeah, no, we're not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> Lesson learned. So I hate to have lessons learned the hard way, but sometimes that's what it takes for us, right? So go ahead and free that up. Perfection. And I don't keep scraps like that around, I just toss them. I, I just don't see the point in keeping straps. So now you've got this vinyl piece. You can use this as the template for cutting out the fabric. So we'll go and grab that fabric piece right here. And I had to fussy cut the mess out of this and I felt so bad about it. I didn't want to fussy cut it, <laughs> but it's adorable fabric. Look at this, okay, I'll show you. I'll show you real quick. It's like, don't care, whatever. I wanted to do the whatever on the toast but he was way up here and I didn't want to fussy cut this deep into the fabric. Um, seriously, I can't. Like pretty much this egg personifies how I feel right now um, and I love it. Again, elephant house fabrics. 
uh, they, they basically sponsored the stream or video. Sorry, I'm stuck in Twitch mode. It happens to the best of us. So we'll use that vinyl as a template to cut out what we need from the fabric end. There we go. And if you choose to, you can interface this fabric. I find it thickens it up a bit too much. Um, but if it's a thinner fabric, you may want to do it. Um, I'm feeling like this is going to be just fine once it's all folded up and, and then attached. This will basically stabilize it a bit so you won't need to worry about it. So we'll just going to move that fabric out of the way. And now I'm going to get my ironing board back out. Well, my, my, <laughs> I use the term board loosely, very loosely. <laughs> so iron that piece of fabric flat. And I only use this for demonstration purposes, to be truthful. I, I would never, <laughs> I would never advocate using something this small. This is like one of those cricket things. All right. And just as we did for the zipper ends, you're going to fold this in half. Just very quickly, you don't need to like press for long just to make a crease because you don't want that crease to be permanent. You just want to be able to uh, guide yourself into uh, pull where to put the raw ends. If you want, you can actually just mark that. I wouldn't mark it with pen. Pen will leak straight through your fabric. Um, but definitely um, you could use like uh, chalk or those magical pens that like erase over time not Frixion. Now take the raw end and fold it toward the center. I'm, I, I'm steaming a little bit here. If anything, just to make sure it's sitting right and kind of stays where I need it. Just because I'm not on a long actual ironing board, I'm just at the cutting table with this 12 inch by 12 inch thing. And the same thing with the other side, fold that raw edge to the center. And just as you're going along, just kind of you tug on it a little bit. All this will make a one inch strap. But you're like kittens. There's raw ends. Yes, yes, I know. We're getting to that. All right, so that's all you needed for this guy. If you did put, if you did do what I did and you have like a crease down the middle, you can just go right back over it again with the heat and it'll get rid of it. This is a quilting weight cotton, so it's a little easier to manipulate and get the wrinkles out of it. All right, so let me put this down just to be safe. And I don't need it anymore, so I'm going to unplug it. There we go. You can hear the unplugging sound. That's my liability. Please don't sue me for emotional damage. Okay, take your vinyl strip and lay it flat on the table, wrong side up. And you're going to want to mark the middle, which in this case, since we did a two inch uh, by 16 inch, it's gonna be a one inch mark. Whoops, my finger down the center. I'm going to take double-sided tape, glue works, prayers, and tots, tater, tater tots, and pears work, but uh, I, I would highly advise you grab some of this leather tape and press that down into the center seam. Well, mark. It's a mark. Press it and remove that tape. Well, the paper portion of the tape. Can you tell I'm tired? Wow. Like, wow. Okay. Fold down the raw end to the center. And press down. Like so. Just like that. Same thing on the other side. You're going to fold that over raw edge to the center and press down. And you'll note this is extremely similar to what we did for the little D-ring attachment. It's pretty much the exact same thing, only longer. 
to the center, not slightly north of center. Otherwise you end up with a really wonky looking uh, thing. Oh, wrist strap. Okay, pressing down and done. Okay, now take the fabric portion wrong side up and the vinyl portion wrong side down. And you're gonna just do this kind of number here where the right sides are on the outside. I am going to take clips and I'm going to clip them down. I don't advise using tape on this part because it can actually affect how the, uh, how the wrist strap moves. And it really, I mean, it just depends on the vinyl if you're doing, if you're doing this with the vinyl. If you're not doing this with vinyl and you want to do this uh, with, uh, with just the fabric, you would need four, four inch wide for the fabric strap. But again, the pattern covers that pretty well. I'm doing this my way and also kind of hoping that this gives a, a quick lesson on the fabric straps, even though I do actually have like a standalone tutorial on that. Now I'm only doing one side of this. And the reason for that is because my machine, and I, I would assume your machines as well, uh, may drag the fabric down a bit. Um, and so you're gonna wanna stitch the same side, like so, so stitch from this side down and then this side down. Don't flip it and go this way, otherwise it'll start twisting the fabric. So I kind of just use this to line this up so it doesn't move around on me when I'm at the machine. So let's take this over there now. All right, now this side is gonna be up. This is what I consider to be my right side for my strap because I want it to match my bag fabric. So I'm gonna stitch from this side up and I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge using a top stitch length. So we'll go ahead and start that. And I hold everything in place as I'm moving my way down the strap, kind of smoothing it and pulling it as well. And that's so I don't end up with any bunching. So you see it's kind of kind of bunching up down here like that, that's fine because this is a little stretchier than the vinyl underneath. And that's why we always sew these in one direction. Now, if you're using an industrial just like me, you'll know, like I actually have measurements here on this side. I bought a special stitch plate for that. However, the quarter inch is at the end of the compound foot. So when I go to the other side, that's what I'm using as my guide. So let me just clean up this thread, get that out of the way. And I'm gonna start on the other side, going in the same direction, again, so I don't get any weird twisting of the fabric. Quarter inch away. And pull and hold. You can go a little faster on this end. Yeehaw, right? So the top stitching looks nice, but it also helps to provide a little bit of extra stability to your strap. A little bit of extra um, something something to make sure that it doesn't stretch out of shape over time. Okay, I'm gonna melt these ends. And melt that end. Now I'm gonna go back over it, but this time I'm going to be just an eighth of an inch from the edge, which is basically following this little interior here. And the reason for that is because, see how this flies up? That's annoying. So you wanna stitch as close to the edge as you can, but it's easier to do that once you've actually stitched the quarter inch. So I usually just save this part for last, but it helps to kind of make it stop curling itself forward. Okay. And the other side. Ha! 
I love the sound of this machine. I bet it sounds glorious on video. But I wouldn't know because I can't stand to hear myself talk, so I never watch my own videos. <laughs> okay, and take that. Yes. Beautiful. So this is the underside of the strap, and this is the top side of the strap. This is what we're going to consider to be our exterior. So grab, because I forgot it earlier, grab a hook, and you want it to be a one-inch hook with a D-ring attached to it. And I just use these little guys. It's a smaller bag, so I use a smaller profile hook. And you're going to take that hook, and you're going to put it in such that it is facing the exterior. So it's on the exterior side like this, okay? And we're gonna kind of fold this up. Actually, let me roll this back a bit so you can see a little better. So we've got the hook in here sitting like this on our strap and we're gonna fold and sandwich it in so our right sides are together. And you may wanna trim a little bit of these ends down. Actually, we can get it in just a second. And then we're going to stitch, go back to a normal stitch length. I'm gonna stitch about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from the edge there. Whatever it takes, to, just make sure it's all lined up and looks nice. Just like that, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim all this down. Let me get some big scissors. Let me get some big scissors, I'll show you. Get my femores. Okay, and then we're gonna trim right along here just to kind of even things out a bit, make it look nice. Get rid of a lot of the, the, the odds and ends threads here. Throw that away, always keep your work area clean. And we're gonna flip that and pull this guy down. A smidge. There's, a, <laughs> there's some threads poking out on the underside. I'm just going to burn those off real quick. Come here. You're not part of this party. You may go away now. Go away. <sighs> okay. All right. Now, oh, there's another one. See, I'm OCD, so I'll just get rid of it. What you don't want to do is you don't want to fold it up like this because that's going to be bulky and it won't lay flat. So I'm gonna scroll and I'm gonna zoom, extreme close up. So instead, what I usually like to tell people is to fold it more like this. I'm gonna flat like that. And then when you stitch, you're gonna seal in those raw ends so they get kind of enclosed in there. So we're gonna kind of flip this like that, go underneath. Just like that. So now it lays nice and flat and those raw edges are kind of sealed in so you don't have to worry about them. And I'm just gonna do my fancy burning tool thing. Don't mind me, I just like to show off my tech. I'm such a braggart, right? And there you have your wrist strap. Look at that, isn't that nice? Okay, let's go put it on our bag, because we're done. You've got your finished bag, you've got a finished strap. So now all you gotta do is put those two things together, and you have yourself a blue collar clem clem clematis, clematis. I still will never say it right. You have a wristlet. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for paying attention for so long during this tutorial. I hope it helped you. Please feel free to like or subscribe to the channel. Uh, look at the description below. Also, if you like the content that you see here, I do stream sewing on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 p.m. until 11 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash fierce kittens. Feel free to pop by. Also, don't hesitate to tell me what you want to see me do in YouTube content. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I would really appreciate your feedback. Thank you and have a great week.